address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator, John Becker. For the first time in the history of his many appearances on this program, Congressman Tim Burchett refused to appear head to head with his political rival in the interest of ensuring that you, our viewers, hear from both of the candidates in the middle of an unprecedented pandemic. We opted to interview Republican Tim Burchett and Democrat Renee Hoyos separately. John North interviewed each of the candidates one-on-one. -on -one. He asked them the same questions and allotted the same amount of time. We flipped a coin to see who would begin first, and we start with Congressman Tim Burchett. Congressman Tim Burchett, welcome to Inside Tennessee. We appreciate your time. So uh, we thought we would take about 10 minutes and just throw some questions at you and see what your responses are. Okay. Question one, uh, timely, what, if anything, do you think Congress should be doing to help the American people right now amid the ongoing virus crisis? Well, I've, I've voted for uh, well over a trillion dollars in aid, first of all, and we've got to make sure all that aid gets to where it needs to go. And some of it hasn't even been spent yet, and they're, we're trying to go back and get more and, and do other things. And I, I really wish the speaker would come together with us with a, a, a decent proposal that would, uh, a really clean bill, uh, just a standalone piece of legislation without all the amendments. And that we, you know, nothing about the marijuana growers in California or the Kennedy Performing Arts Center or these little pet projects, just so we can truly say we're trying to help the American public and not run for reelection. And and I think I think we could we could really do some more, but but we have done a lot. You know this. Um, the process they, they've expedited for um, to fight the coronavirus, to, to find a vaccination out there for it is, is light years ahead of what anything else. I've talked to medical people all over. I've talked to Dr. Fauci. I've talked to all of them. And, um, you know, what we're doing now is is incredibly, um, uh, I think we're doing away with the bureaucracy and we're trying to get, putting all our heads together and trying to get, get, a, get a vaccination. So I feel comfortable about what we're doing. Um, I wish we could do more, but I wish the politics wouldn't get in the middle of it. Let me ask you this, sort of touching on fiscal issues. You voted against that continuing resolution that we had a little bit ago to temporarily fund the government through December 11. Um, would you have allowed the government to go to shutdown, or what would have been your strategy? Well, it's not my strategy. It's just my political beliefs and my and my East Tennessee beliefs, if you will. I, you know, there was a lot of garbage in there. There was um, things that should have never been in there. Just way too much pork. You know, maybe a third of it was pork or more, actually. And then we just dug into it more and more. The original bill was supposed to um, was supposed to. We were supposed to hear it on a Friday, and they were going to drop it on us Thursday night. And then I think it leaked out, and so they, they rushed it to the floor. And we had literally the the completed version. I believe it was 15 minutes to read, hundreds of pages. And that, John, that's just, that's no way to run a railroad. You cannot do, we cannot continue to do that. We can't continue to spend, as I used to say, our kids' money, but it's our great grandchildren's money now. We've already depleted our kids and our kids' money. And with all the pork and the things, the last bill we passed or that we passed the house, I mean, it, it provided um, it freedom for felons. Uh, it, 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 you know, just more and more just going down the path of uh, eligible for, um, um, Planned Parenthood. There was something in one of them about, um, uh, let's see, there was uh, just multiples of things <laughs> going through my mind right now, but it it was a nightmare of, of a bill, and, that, and I, I I just couldn't in good conscience vote for it, and and not serious about doing it either. It's They're just messaging. They're trying to put, they're trying to pass trillion-dollar bills, and where just a small segment, they'll pull out like my op opponent will do, and pull us say, well, Tim Burchett voted against this. Well, in reality, I, I would have voted for that if they had the guts to put it up as a standalone bill, and they didn't. And it just it just creates more uh, more of a deficit. And it's not. And and folks say, well, why didn't you propose something else? The problem is, by the rules, Speaker Pelosi controls the rules, and she can literally say pass a rule not to follow the rules. And that's so many times what they do. You know, we're supposed to have a a 48 hour rule we're supposed to have a bill 48 hours before we vote on it well they they vote to do away with the rules and that gummit we do away with the rules and that's the way it works and it's it's not right and um, and we know better 
And, you know, and I don't know that the Republicans would do much better if they were in charge. Um, and I, they didn't before. I hope they've learned their lesson. I sure would hold their feet to the fire, just as I did in the state legislature to do those very things. You're coming toward the end of your first term. Uh, it's not easy for any freshman, but I wonder if you could give yourself a grade. What kind of a grade do you think you, you've had so I'm, far? I'm not, I'm not good at, uh, at, at grading myself. I, I will say this, that I have, um, I have uh, sponsored and passed legislation. There's people that have been up there literally decades and never passed legislation. I have, you know, I passed a standalone bill, a microloan transparency and accountability bill. It, um, it ensures the SBA gives rural small businesses access to microloans, and, and it provides something you and the press like. It's uh, some transparency. One of the complaints we always get is, you know, all the big boys end up with it. And we never know who gets the money. And, um, and we've been able to, um, we, you know, that was in that bill. So I, and I've several other bills I've done. I, I did one with um, the prison to pr proprietorship and I did that with uh, um, Hakeem Jeffries. Uh, he's one of the ranking Democrats. And if Speaker Pelosi is, is not reelected as speaker, Hakeem Jeffries will probably be the speaker. And I would say by any stretch of the imagination, he is no conservative, but I, I know, I, I know how to do it. I know the system. And um, I and I had the bill about the the, um, uh, the uh, no art in embassies where they would they would buy these. Pay, they remember they bought they paid. I know you're a musical fan. I think they had a it was a um, I'm Bob the, Dylan. Bob Dylan, yeah, Bob Dylan paint, painting. I think it was an eighty thousand seventy or eighty thousand dollar painting, and that's great. That I love the arts. I, one of my areas of certification was art education when I graduated from University of Tennessee. But but nobody would ever see that art in the back of these embassies. And they, um, and you know, those are the kind of things we got to start looking at fiscal responsibility. And I've, and I've done that, and I've passed legislation. It's not just I put my money where my mouth is, and I've sponsored several other bills that have that were not standalone, that were added into other bigger bills. And time will, you know, we don't need to go into all that, but um, that's that's where we are on that. Assuming you get reelected, what uh, what legislation are you looking at in 2021? I would actually like, um, I want to be fiscally responsible. I'm, I'm a capitalist and I would like to see our, our rural areas and our inner cities uh, have the same benefits that some of our other, other areas have had. We, um, I wouldn't, I've, I've developed friendships across the aisle and in the, in the United States Senate and um, these opportunity zones, I think we need to, um, we need to have a better formula for those to where we, we go with those um, in our communities. And that we, um, you know, I don't think we need another, uh, rent by the week, widescreen TV shop. I saw a rent or a rent by the week automobile rims. You know, we don't need more liquor stores. We don't need more um, smoke shops, things like that. We need real jobs, and we, we need to provide the um, the skills there. I'm big on the trades, and I think that plays a major component in it. That our inner cities, what we're lacking there, are just jobs, quality quality jobs, not nine to five, not you know hourly wage jobs, but serious trades where they earn a great living and that we can be um they can make generational change and i think all that plays together i've i've worked on some environmental issues the trillion trees I issue uh, we worked with a congressman out of out of arkansas and he and i have been working on that for quite some time he's um uh, bruce westerman he's out of arkansas and you know, we plant a trillion trees at a review if we had a trillion trees planted in this world today more uh, we we could roll back the, the harmful effects of carbon by 20 years. And people say, well, you know what? You say you're a capitalist. Well, those trees and things provide jobs for folks. It's not just that. It's it's it is not a it's not a lumber yard bill. It's actually an environmental bill that's going to provide a lot of things down the road. Um, and I'm going to continue fighting uh, for transportation, our infrastructure. We have got to get that back in shape. We and and, and when we do that, it's going to provide jobs. Well, we've got to do it in a cost-effective manner. And the way we're doing it now without passing budgets, the United States Congress hasn't passed a budget in over 20 years. And I'd like to hold our feet to the fire on things like that. And we need to do those things in a fiscally responsible manner. So it's a lot, it's, it's not just, you know, it, it's, it's a wish list, but it's something I see as a reality. And the more I talk about it, the more people nod their heads and say yes. And what does that play into the second congressional district? It plays a whole lot. Tennessee Valley Authority, you know, the University of Tennessee, um, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, they all play into that through innovation. 
and, and we've got to be innovative in our approach to this thing. We can't just do it the way we've done it the last 20 years because that's not working anymore. And I and and we got to encourage our young folks along the way. It's, it's horrible that they're not they don't they're not at the table because they feel disillusioned about the whole system. And we've got to get their ideas and bring those to the table. So, you know, my plate would be full if I'm fortunate enough to be reelected. Got about 20 seconds left. Can you differentiate yourself from your opponent? Well, I'm from here. I'm from East Tennessee. I, you know, I don't believe in sanctuary cities. I don't believe in defunding the police. I believe in a strong military. I believe in a strong Second Amendment. I believe in life. And those are all things that I can differentiate myself from my opponent. Um, I, I, I'm straightforward. A lot of people don't like the fact that I, I speak my mind, but you don't know where you, you, you don't have to worry about where you stand with Tim Burchett, you know, and uh, you know, I've, I've done that. I know the folks around here. I've lived in this community and, um, and, and frankly, I've enjoyed the work. I'm, I'm incredibly blessed. Every night I walk out of the Capitol and I look at that dome and I think, you know, wow, my parents were depression era people. My daddy fought in the second world war. My mama lost a brother fighting the Nazis and she flew an airplane during the war and their baby boy is in the United States Congress. And I think I'm one of the most fortunate people in the world to have the beautiful wife and daughter I do. And, and I want my daughter to grow up in the East Tennessee that I, that I grew up in. Congressman Tim Burchett, we appreciate your time. We hope you have a great Sunday morning. Back with Renee Hoyos right after this. <laughs>